Hey everyone, Dr. Bagbanger here, and today we'll be kicking off things with a new chapter, a chapter about glaucoma, right? Glaucoma is a very common disease as we all know, but before understanding a glaucoma itself, we first need to understand what the normal anatomy and physiology of the eye related to glaucoma is. So here's a diagram of the eye that I've been showing you for quite some time. I took this from Wikipedia, of course. You can see a few very important structures. Let's first talk about all the structures which are really relevant to glaucoma, right? So first of all, the most important one, of course, this structure right here, or this structure right here called the ciliary body, right? And then, of course, we have the posterior chamber, which is this place, anterior chamber, which is this place, right? Don't worry, we'll be seeing a diagram next, which will make this clearer. We have the green iris over here, the lens, right? The vitreous humor, and then we have the retina too, right? The retina is going to be an important part of glaucoma, right? Because glaucoma basically does affect the retina. Of course, there will be detailed lectures about retina and its pathologies in a different chapter. Let's let's actually, you know, let, let me let me make a a diagram by myself. I'm going to rotate it like this a little bit, and then I'm going to draw this redraw this portion, right? in my own drawing. Here we are. Here's the structure. Let me label a few things. So of course here we have the cornea, right? This one right here. This is the iris of course. This is the lens. Over here we have the vitreous humor. By the way, I really would like to give a shout out to my friend who lent me his graphics tablet. As you can see I'm writing right now. I'm not using a mouse. So thank you so much man. Really appreciate it. We know the three basic layers of the eye, right? The outermost layer called the, sc the sclera, right? Then there's a middle layer called the choroid, right? Then there's the internal neuronal layer, right? Which comprises the retina and, and, and other stuff, right? So this outermost layer over here, of course, is it's the sclera. The middle layer over here is called the choroid, right? And then we have the innermost layer, which is not shown here, but it it is the neuronal layer, right? Which contains all these rods and cones we will be talking about that in the relevant chapter. So, basic structure done. Let's learn a few new terms. Here are a few basic structures related to glaucoma. Anterior and posterior chambers, right? Let's go back. See, aqueous humor is released from a part of this ciliary body. Then this aqueous humor is secreted here, right? This portion is called the posterior chamber, right? And then from the posterior chamber, the fluid exits through the pupil, right? This is, of course, the iris. The, this, this area is the pupil, right? So it exits through the pupil into the anterior chamber right here. Then we have something called the trabecular meshwork that we have not really drawn here. So what is the basic idea in glaucoma? See, what happens in glaucoma is that one of the most major symptoms of glaucoma is increased intraocular pressure, right? So increased IOP is one of the biggest things in glaucoma. And the intraocular pressure is actually exerted by the aqueous humor, right? All around here, there's aqueous humor. Inside here, outside here as well. And this exerts a certain pressure, right? And this pressure is called the intraocular pressure, right? Just like we studied in the lacrimal system, over here we also have a production system, right? The ciliary body. And then we have a removal system in the form of the canal of Schlem. Let me draw what I'm talking about. See, the aqueous humor is released, right? It comes out here, it washes all these structures, give, gives nutrition to all these structures, and then this, and then kind of exits through this, this, this area, right? Let's see what's in this area. In this area, we have something called the trabecular meshwork, right? So think of trabecular meshwork as this little sieve, right? As this little filter. And behind this filter, is this little pipe kind of thing, right? So, this little filter kind of thing is called the trabecular meshwork. Trabecular meshwork. And then, trabecular meshwork actually empties into the canal of Schlem. This blue pipe kind of thing that I drew here, this is the canal of Schlem, right? So, aqueous humor is produced here, it goes out here, it enters through the trabecular meshwork into the canal of Schlem, right? And then it goes beyond, right? And we will study where beyond is, right? And then we will study these three things later. 
Right. So we have the uh, drainage system and we have the production system as well. Right. And intraocular pressure is actually maintained by both of these. Right. If one of them gets out of balance, of course, we will have either an increased or a decreased intraocular pressure. Right. And usually it's the drainage system which has problems. Right. And the problem in drainage system causes, causes glaucoma. Let's talk about aqueous humor for a second. Aqueous humor is not really exciting, right? It's it's almost all of it is water. Nothing so special about it at all, right? Although it has a high amount of ascorbic acid. Can you tell me which vitamin is ascorbic acid? That's right. Vitamin C, right? Ascorbic acid is vitamin C. It's another name for vitamin C. And there also, of course, might be a few amino acids and antibodies in the aqueous humor. And the aqueous humor is actually produced by a part of the ciliary body called the ciliary processes, right? Ciliary processes are these finger-like projections and they produce aqueous humor. They are lined by epithelia, of course, specialized epithelia, which secrete aqueous humor. And as I said, the balance between the production system and the drainage system constitutes the intraocular pressure, right? So a normal intraocular pressure is around 10 to 22 millimeters of mercury, right? There are certain procedures through which we can measure the intraocular pressure and we will be having separate lectures for them, right? So 10 to 22 is the normal range. Above 22 is considered abnormal, right? And it does, of course, fluctuate through the day, right? Up to 4 millimeters of mercury, it can go up and down throughout the day, through different times of the day, right? But what happens in glaucomas is that this fluctuation gets much larger. It gets around to 8 millimeters of mercury. Right? So it should not fluctuate so much, right? It should remain proper. It should remain relatively constant, right? Four, four millimeters of mercury is all right. More than four is not okay, right? And what is the function of aqueous humor? It is a means of circulation for the avascular structures. Let's go back a few slides. See, all these structures here, whether that's the lens or the cornea, right? They are both avascular and that's very necessary because let's imagine there's blood running through these. And, and this, right? And, and light passes through this, and you'll see everything red, right? So it's necessary for these to be avascular. And of course, these are living tissues. If they're avascular, how are they going to get nutrients? Well, that is the job of the aqueous humor, right? It provides the avascular structures a means of circulation, right? So in circulation means both the things, bringing in good stuff and taking away the bad toxic stuff, right? Circulation for the avascular structures. The production pathway is easy, right? But the the outflow pathway is very, very important, right? Because, because there are pathologies related to outflow pathway, right? So we really need to first understand how the outflow pathway works. So this is how it works. See, this is one pathway, right? And here is another totally different pathway. So there are two pathways through which the aqueous humor gets out, right? This pathway is more common in fact, 90% of the aqueous humor is drained through this pathway. But this another pathway called the uveoscleral pathway, it drains like maybe 10 to 15% of it, right? But majority is this. So this pathway consists of these four things, the trabecular meshwork, canal of Schlem, aqueous veins, and episclerar veins, right? I think we did discuss both of these. Now we need to discuss these two. Let's go back a few slides. Here's the structure. As I said, trabecular meshwork, which opens up into the canal of Schlem, then the canal of Schlem actually opens into these other vessels called the aqueous veins, right? And from the aqueous veins, they drain into even bigger veins called the episcleral veins, right? So let's draw a big episcleral vein right here. So let's trace the pathway again. The anatomy over here might not be exactly accurate, but the pathway is correct. First of all, we have the trabecular meshwork, which flows into the canal of Schlem, which flows into the aqueous veins, which flows into this big episcleral vein, right? So pathway number one takes away 90% of the stuff. Then pathway number two, uveoscleral pathway. This pathway is kind of strange. So of course we know that all over this place we have the aqueous humor, right? Now the ciliary body actually has the capability to absorb a little bit of the aqueous humor as well, right? It produces aqueous humor, of course, but it can take, it can absorb some of the aqueous humor. And that's exactly what happens. It absorbs some of the aqueous humor, right? A little bit of it, 10 to 15% of it. It travels through all this place. And then it also opens up into the episcleral veins, 
The reason why it's called a ureoscleral pathway is because, because it goes from the uvea right here and it goes into the sclera up here, right? So we've got two pathways, right? One through here into the episcleral veins, the other through the outside, the major pathway into the episcleral vein as well, right? So two pathways. And I think we are done with the basic anatomy of it, right? Most of the glaucoma will actually be related to these structures. So let's first classify a little bit of how glaucomas are, right? So there's a primary glaucoma, right? There's a secondary glaucoma, there's the congenital glaucoma, and there's a normal tension glaucoma. So primary glaucoma, just a little bit of a, just a little bit of a description, right? We will be studying all of these types in quite a lot of detail. We'll be making separate lectures for each and every one of these. Just for now, just a two-line definition, right? A primary glaucoma is a glaucoma which occurs either due to increased production or decreased drainage, right? Fairly simple. A problem in any of the two systems concerning the aqueous humor, right? A secondary glaucoma though is also similar but in this case there is no direct problem in both of these systems right there is a more there is a much more of a systemic problem there is a problem in the whole body and that kind of affects the structures in the eye right and that causes glaucoma we have a glaucoma which is secondary to a condition to an underlying condition right then we have congenital glaucoma which occurs in neonates then we have this very unique kind of glaucoma where there is normal tension, right? So intraocular pressure is all right, but we still have a glaucoma. We have a neuropathy, right? And, and we will, of course, be studying this, this kind of glaucoma as well. But just a heads up, a little bit of an interesting condition, right? So look at these two words, closed angle glaucoma, open angle glaucoma, closed angle glaucoma, open angle glaucoma, right? What is this angle that they're talking about? Where is this angle and why does it open or close? Let's, let's go back to our diagram once again. The angle which we're talking about is this angle. This angle right here. The angle between the iris and the cornea. Right? Iridocorneal angle. Iris and cornea. The angle between this. So look at this condition right now. The angle is okay. It's open. Right? But imagine another situation. Imagine it looks somewhat like this, right? This drainage system is okay, but the fluid has a hard time getting through this place. This angle is closed. This is called an angle closure glaucoma, right? Angle closure glaucoma, closed angle glaucoma, open angle glaucoma, right? As simple as it gets. So, closed angle glaucoma and open angle glaucoma, right? And that's about it. Thank you for watching. Like, subscribe, and share if you learn something. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a nice day.